Hey, what's up, everybody? Thanks for joining us again. This is week four of Exposed, our our last and final week on this uh, on this lesson. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, let me ask you a question: Have you ever done something wrong? Like you knew you messed up, and you're almost positive that you're going to get in trouble, right? But then you didn't. Has that ever happened to y'all? I mean, as you think about that. Knowing you could have been punished, but you weren't. How does that make you feel? See, when we do something wrong, we get in trouble. That's just the way it is, right? And that's how life works. I mean, think of if you do something that your parents told you not to do, you're going to get grounded, right? Or you're going to get stuff taken away. I mean, if you throw a ball through a window... You're going to have to pay for it. Or if you, you know, speed down a street and you lose control and you wreck your parents' car through two trees and, and lay it on its side, you get a ticket and you get to take defensive driving. I mean, when we do something wrong, there's usually a price to pay, right? <clears throat> so that, that's going to bring us to uh, where we're going to be at on this final lesson. So go ahead and start turning to Matthew chapter 18. So Matthew chapter 18 and, and it'll be verse 28, okay? So Matthew chapter 18, and starting in verse 28. It says, and this is, this is Jesus, right? He's, he's given another lesson to his disciples. And so he says that a, a servant went out, and he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. So now a hundred denarii. A denarii was a day's wages, so this is a hundred days worth of wages, okay? And so, he says that he went and found this other servant that owed him a hundred denarii. He grabbed him and he started choking him and said, pay what you owe. At this, his fellow servant fell down and began begging him, be patient with me, I will pay you back. But he wasn't willing. Instead, he went and threw him into prison until he could pay what was owed. So, we're going to kind of pause right there for a second. So, this is, so Jesus is telling this parable, this story, to try to teach uh, his disciples a lesson, right? And now, what I just read, that sounds a lot like how we treat each other, right? I mean, we're always like, you owe me, or I'll get you back. Or maybe you even heard this famous misquote about Jesus, all right? And, and it's what we call the golden rule, but maybe you've heard this. It says, do to others as they have done to you. Maybe you're sitting there and you're like, that doesn't sound right. See, I always tell y'all to read scripture for yourself. Test everything. Because the real scripture, now, that's what we hear. We hear that all the time of do to others as they have done to us. The golden rule. The actual real scripture is Matthew, if you go back in Matthew chapter 7, verse 12. And it says, so in everything, do to others what you would have them do to you. For this sums up the law and prophets. That's the real scripture. That's the real quote there of what Jesus is saying. It says to do to others as you would want them to do to you. It doesn't say seek revenge, hold a grudge. It doesn't say any of that. All right? It says basically to treat others how you want to be treated. Even if they treat you bad, you're to have grace and love for each other. That's what the golden rule is, right? But we, we, we twist it. So like I said, always read scripture for yourself, guys, okay? Now, now don't get me wrong, all right? When, we talk about, when we're talking about this golden rule of treating others how we want to be treated, listen to me. If someone is physically hurting you, then you need to get away. You need to let someone in authority know. Okay? You, you can stop being in a toxic friendship or in a toxic relationship and still find, find it in your heart to forgive them and pray that God changes their heart without still being involved in that toxic relationship. Okay? So let me be very clear on that. All right? Now, at this point, 
it's where we need to, we really need to go back to, to read some more scripture, okay? We always need to read more scripture, learn context, okay? Because I, I read to you the golden rule, we read the, the story of the servant, and they don't line up, right? They, they don't mesh. And so we need context. Now, what they always tell y'all when you read some scripture and it doesn't really maybe make sense or it doesn't sound right or something or you don't really understand it, read above it, right? Go back and, and, and get context, get knowledge, all right? So let's learn some context about the guy in Jesus' story in Matthew chapter 18. So we're, we're still in Matthew 18. And, and like I, what I was just reading about him where he went out and he found the guy that owed him money and he threw him in prison, right? He didn't show him mercy or grace. He didn't really follow the golden rule that Jesus had laid out in Matthew 7. So, so let's go back, Matthew chapter 18, and let's go back to verse 21. Okay, so we're going to the start of this conversation. So Matthew 21, and it says, When Peter approached him and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? As many as seven times? I tell you, not as many as seven, Jesus replied but 70 times 7. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven can be compared to a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. When he began to settle accounts, one who had owed him 10,000 talents. So 10,000 talents, guys. That is, so we were talking about what a denarii is. A denarii is a day's wages, right? So a talent is basically... 6,000 denarii. So, I mean, he owes 20 years worth of wages. Okay? So, keep that keep that in your mind. This 10,000 talents is equivalent to 20 years worth of wages. And so, that's what he owes. And it says that, that this man was brought before him. Since he did not have the money to pay it back, his master commanded that he, his wife, his children, and everything he had be sold to pay the debt. At this, the servant fell face down before him and said, Be patient with me. I will pay you everything. Then the master of the servant had compassion, released him, and forgave him the loan. Now that servant went out and found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. He grabbed him, started choking him, and said, Pay what you owe. At this, his fellow servant fell down and began begging him, Be patient with me. I will pay you back. But he wasn't. He wasn't willing, and instead, he went and threw him into prison until he could pay what he what was owed. When the other servants saw what had taken place, they were deeply distressed, and they went and reported to their master everything that had happened. Then, after he summoned him, his master said to him, "You wicked servant! I forgave you all the debt because you begged me. Shouldn't you also have had mercy on your fellow servant?" as I had mercy on you. And because he was angry, his master handed him over to the jailers to be tortured until he could pay everything that he owed. So also, my heavenly Father will do to you unless every one of you forgives his brother or sister from your heart. So, God offers mercy to the undeserving yet humble. God doesn't forgive our sins because we deserve it. That's what we can take from this story, all right? He doesn't forgive our sins because we deserve it. See, we're that guy walking around with all this massive debt that we owe to our Creator. And I mean, we should be locked up. But God is like that king in the story. And He forgives instead of punishing. He completely erases our sins and he has mercy on us. See, mercy is having every right to punish someone. But instead, you choose to forgive without penalty. And if you have experienced that forgiveness of sins, then your response and my response should be to forgive others. That's, that's what Jesus is saying here. The servant in this story is an example of what not to do. See, when you experience God's mercy, it transforms you. Our hearts are softened, and, and we should be inspired to be merciful and compassionate because God was merciful and compassionate with us. My dad 
modeled that for me when I was 16 and I crashed his car through two trees and left it on its side just a couple blocks from our house I ran home scared I was scared of what I had just done what was going to happen I was I was worried as I'm running home I'm worried what my dad's going to do and what he's going to say but I still ran home because I knew he was my dad and I trusted his love for me and even though I knew he would probably be upset and that he might even punish me, I knew he still loved me. And when I got home and I told him what had happened, what I had done, I'll never forget it. He just embraced me. He just gave me a big hug and then he stepped back and he just asked if I was okay. That's as close to, to mercy and grace that, that, the, that God gives us that that's probably as close as I can think of here on earth. And it, and it still doesn't really capture it. God's mercy and grace is even more than that. So if you've experienced that grace and that mercy, then show it to others. When you realize that you are an undeserving recipient of God's forgiveness, it challenges you to view others the same way. And if you haven't experienced God's love and forgiveness, now's your chance. As I pray, I, as I pray, cry out to him humbly and earnestly, and he will forgive you completely. Let's pray. Father God, I just want to thank you. I just want to thank you that you love us even, even though we're a mess. Even though we mess up even though we go against you time and time again. God, I just want to thank you for never giving up on us and loving us. And God, I want to thank you for changing hearts. I pray that you're changing hearts right now. God, I want everybody to experience the, your grace and your mercy. Because unlike anything that we can fathom, it's unlike anything that any of us can show each other, really, God. God, I pray for those that have experienced it like myself. God, I pray that you give us your eyes for people and your heart for people and help us to show mercy and grace to them. And God, the world needs that more than ever right now. So God, I thank you for what you're doing in these hearts. I thank you for what you're doing in mine. I thank you for what you're doing. God, I just love you. In your name I pray. Amen. All right, everybody. I love y'all. I'll see y'all later. Bye.